Today we begin an exciting, life-changing series of sermons titled, The Three Greatest Words. St. Paul puts his pen to parchment and inspired by the Holy Spirit, writes in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, and now abides faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Please turn to John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. The three greatest words have the power to change your life, to change your marriage, to change your business, to transform your attitude, fearful attitude concerning your future. The three greatest words will restore truth and justice to America. The three greatest words will crush the spirit of defeat and depression that's sweeping our nation and our public schools and our churches. The three greatest words will bring a revival of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness from sea to shining sea. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the fake news and government corruption be destroyed by a revival of truth and justice under the law of God. Read 1 John 5 and 4, please. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that we have that overcomes the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Heavenly Father, in the authority of Jesus' name, we come before your throne today as the church of Jesus Christ in America is under a fire. Anoint us to hear the word of faith, to fight the good fight of faith until we overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil, the deception that is sweeping our land. The victory is ours in Jesus' name, through faith that wins. And all of God's children said amen. amen. You may be seated. Concentrate for today on the word faith that wins. The word faith is the celebration of victory. The word faith produces joy unspeakable. It brings confidence. It gives hope. It produces the blessed life. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Say that with me. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. That's the Bible. Faith gives you the victory in your personal life, in your professional life, in your spiritual life. Faith gives you victory over sickness and disease. Faith gives you victory over fear and insecurity about your future. A lot of people are now becoming fearful because of what's happening in our country. They're fearful for their children and they're fearful for America's future. Faith gives the victory over every form of fear. It gives victory over habits and emotions that enslave you. Some of you in this audience are addicted to drugs. Prescription drugs are still drugs, but you're addicted to it. Some of you are emotionally addicted to bitterness, to rage, to resentment, to depression, to rejection because of things that have happened to you into your past. I challenge you to forget those things that have passed and live in the sunshine of God's love for today by faith. Give the Lord praise in the house. There's no subject in the Bible that is exciting as faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. Everything that God offers in this book comes on the wings of faith. Faith is the currency of heaven. Say that with me. Faith is the currency of heaven. Going to God without faith is like going to the mall without money. Faith is being sure of what we hope for, and certain of what we cannot see. Romans 1.17, the just shall live by faith. Say that with me. The just shall live 
by faith. Listen, faith is not believing God can do it. Faith is believing that God will do it for you today. Faith starts out before you know how it's going to turn out. When you know exactly how something is going to happen to the end because you have the economic power to make that happen, that's not faith. Faith is doing daring of the soul that goes further than the natural eyes can see. We walk by faith and not by sight. If you don't believe it, you will never achieve it. The Bible says, for with God, Nothing is impossible. Once you believe that scripture, you have crossed the Hellespont from walking in the natural to the supernatural. Once you believe that nothing is impossible with God and you start thinking it and you start saying it, then you will start living it and your life will never be the same. The just shall live by faith. Give him praise in the house. I'd rather try something great for God and fail than to try something small and succeed. I think God's sitting in heaven waiting for someone to come up with an idea that actually challenges his power and his grandeur to accomplish the impossible. In the natural order, we say seeing is believing. You ever hear that phrase? Seeing is believing, but by faith we believe first and then we receive it. We reverse the natural order. We see it by faith and then we receive it. Mark 9, 23, Jesus said unto them, if you can believe, all things are possible. Say that with me. All things are possible to him that believes. You believe first and then you receive later. Faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you cannot see. That's what faith is. Listen, faith is not a matter of do you believe. The question is, what do you believe and in whom do you believe? Man says, there are many ways to God. We're all going to heaven on different roads. Wrong. There's a narrow way that leads to the throne of grace. And there's a broad way that leads to the fires of hell. You're on one of those two roads. God says, preach the word in season and out of season. Man says, Pastor, preach a new gospel for a changing time. Tell us how to feel good without being good. Tell us about the hot tub Christianity that makes everyone warm and comfortable. Help us to adjust to our sin. Don't help us to confess our sin. Recommend a counselor, not repentance. That's the message that Many pulpits in America right now are presenting to their congregation. Let me say to this body of Christ across America, the way to get rid of your sin is to confess it to the Lord Jesus Christ and let the blood of the cross cleanse you from all iniquity. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The Bible says all nations that forget God are turned into hell. Ladies and gentlemen of America, church members all, Christians, 60 million of you, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Have faith in God. Quit listening to the absolute destructive message of fake news. Pick up the good news and read this. Let your faith be established on this. Our tomorrows are as bright as the sunrise. Our God lives. He has all power in heaven and on earth. The just shall live by faith. Faith is not emotion. You can walk into a hospital room and cry for an hour and nothing will happen. You can pray for 60 seconds in the spirit of faith and cancers will die while you speak. That's a fact. 
Faith is not a feeling. Faith is substance. It's real. It's measurable. It's visible in the eyes of God. The Bible says, and when Jesus saw their faith, say that with me, and when Jesus saw their faith, Faith has evidence. Faith is based on the evidence of what God has done in the scripture previously that gives us hope for what God will do today. God's provision is in his promise. God's provision is in his promise. There are 3,000 promises in this book. Not one of them will work until you have faith in God. Think about that. God provides faith for business ventures. Every businessman in this room and those of you listening across America, listen closely. This year of destiny, God wants to give you a breakthrough, a turning of the tide. Your success does not depend on what Wall Street says. Your success depends upon what God permits based on your faith. Barriers to your success are broken by faith. Do not fear your enemies or the future. God is already in your future working out the problems that are right now tormenting you. Worry is like a, a rocking chair. It gives you something to do but gets you nowhere. Stop it. Don't be afraid of taking on a big project. The Bible says by faith Noah built an ark. It was a monster project. No one on earth had done that before. Noah brought it in on time. He brought it in on budget. He got on board to the salvation of his family. Some will say, but Pastor, I'm not an expert. Let me give you this little word of advice. The Titanic was built by experts. The ark was built by an amateur with faith in God. Pastor John Hagee has dedicated over 65 years of his life to ministry, sharing the gospel with unwavering commitment. From the pulpit to a global ministry, Pastor Hagee has been a beacon of hope and faith. Through changing seasons, he has remained steadfast in his conviction to spread the message of God's love and salvation. Trust in the loving Savior who performs miracles every day and see him transform your life. For your gift of any amount, we will send you a unique 65 years commemorative coin and prayer journal. For your gift of $265 or more, you will also receive a Joshua 2415 tile art and a commemorative book celebrating Pastor Hagee's 65 years in ministry. Take refuge in the word and he will give his angels charge over you. To give your special year-end tax-deductible gift today, call the number on your screen or visit jhm.org slash honor. Some of you are facing a financial challenge. The Bible says it is the Lord that gives you the power to get wealth. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He will rebuke your enemies. He will scatter them like the chaff of the summer threshing floor. Receive God's best. Live life without limit. Live life without limit. No good thing will he withhold from those that diligently seek him. Give the Lord praise in the house. What you believe in, the object of your faith, is critical to your success. The Bible says, have faith in God. Say that with me. Have faith in God. Some people have faith in faith. I'll explain that this way. There are people who live in adultery who are living together without the benefit of a marriage license and making a covenant before God. I have heard people explain it like, well, we love each other. And you know, God is love. So God approves of this. Wrong. You are worshiping an attribute of God. When you face the author and finisher of our faith, you are going to lose your soul. So if you're right now listening on television, one of you needs to move out before the sun sets today. <laughs> the source of faith. 
faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Greek word cometh is a progressive continuance verb meaning to increase. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Proverbs 3 and 8, it, God's word, shall be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. Did you know that this is the greatest health manual ever printed based on the writings of the word of God? It shall be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. Navel is the source of nutrition for the baby in the mother's womb. It is the source of life. Marrow in the bone is the place that makes red blood cells. Life is in the blood. The marrow refreshes and restores life in the body. God's word is the source of life and the source of physical and spiritual nutrition. On Mother's Day a few years ago, a beautiful African-American mother was pushed in her wheelchair right here. She was 102 years of age. She was in beautiful health. And I asked her in front of the whole congregation, what do you attribute living such a healthy and long life? She said, every morning I get up and read the living word of God and it heals me, it touches me, it transforms me. She got a standing ovation and she deserved it. But I'm telling you, you can do the same. Psalms 43, 5, why are you cast down, O my soul? Hope thou in God, for yet shall I praise him. Listen, who is the health of my countenance? Psalms 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all of your iniquities, listen, and heals all of your diseases. There is healing power in the scripture. For years, our church has had the healing scriptures that I have recorded every healing verse in the Bible on those scriptures. We have sent them all over the world and people have testified how they were healed by listening to that Holy Spirit inspired word on that celluloid tape. It wasn't the tape, it's the power of the word of God. The spiritual controls the physical, Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How is your mind renewed? By the word of God. How is your mind corrupted? Fake news is available every night. <laughs> when Satan whispers, you don't have enough faith, Romans 12, 3 says, God has given to every man and to every woman a measure of faith. You have the faith you need to be victorious right now in every dimension of your life. You just need to learn how to turn it loose. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, hear that? Shall what? Say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe the things which he says. He shall have whatsoever he says. You need to write that verse down and put it on your refrigerator. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. There are four points in that verse. One, there is the proclamation, whatsoever you say. The power of life and death is in the tongue. That's the Bible. Speak to the source of the problem. That's the mountain, the place of resistance, the point of resistance. Speak to the source of the problem. In your case, it may be cancer. It may be a heart disease. It may be a business crisis. It may be a marriage crisis. It may be a financial crisis. But speak to the source of the problem. Thirdly, speak without doubting. Job 22, 28, and you shall decree a thing. A decree is a royal proclamation. You are sons and daughters of God. You are royalty. 
You have the power to make a royal declaration. When you decree a thing based upon the Word of God, it will be established in heaven. The results, the mountain moves, the disease is conquered, the sickness ends, the marriage is healed, the financial needs are met, the business crisis suddenly goes away, God's abundance immediately begins to pour, the revelation declares, and they, listen, and they, the believers, overcame him, that Satan, by the word of their testimony. The word of your testimony is a proclamation and the blood of the Lamb. If you have sickness or disease, you're in a business crisis, a marriage that needs healing or restoration, you need a special miracle from God, you need to see your future as being resolved by faith. Are you willing to make a proclamation of faith? Because God is listening when you pray in the name of Jesus and you make a proclamation all heaven turns loose and starts to answer that prayer. Listen to me. When you go to a prayer meeting and someone says, oh, Jesus, do something sometime. That's not a prayer. That's not even asking. When you pray, say what you're praying for what the answer you're looking for, and to whom you're praying, and for whom are you praying, so that when God does it, you know it wasn't the random chance or probability that professors tell you will happen if you live long enough. When you pray for a specific miracle, so specify it that when God does it, even an atheist has to admit God did this. That's the kind of faith. Now, for the practical application of this theological, spiritual, biblical base, if you are in this room and you're watching by television, and someone, you or someone in your family needs divine healing, and you would like to make a proclamation for their healing, today you would like to start the adventure of faith, I want you to stand to your feet and make this proclamation. Say this, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by whose blood I have been sanctified. I have been justified. I confess that you are my healer, that by your stripes, I am now being healed. In the authority of your name, I speak against this disease. Now you name that disease as best you can. Continue. Father God, in the authority of Jesus' name, let this sickness die. Let it leave the body of the righteous. Let it leave the body of God's children. Now, in Jesus' name, we receive healing in the authority of the great physician. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise in the house of God. You may be seated. I'd like for businessmen, you're in this room, to confess that the Lord wants to help your business to supernaturally progress. I want you to stand to your feet and pray this proclamation. What have you got to lose? Live by faith. Believe what this is about to happen. Pray this prayer, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. 
I come to you in the authority of Jesus' name. And I confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life and the Lord of my business. I give my business to you, Lord Jesus. Open the windows of heaven and pour out your blessings upon my business and on me personally. Make a way where there seems to be no way. Open the doors that have been closed. Restore to me sevenfold what Satan has taken from me. Scatter my enemies by your mighty right hand. Open the windows of heaven and bless my business according to your word. I receive it now in Jesus' name. It's done. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise in the house of God. I want to invite you to join us for our live worship services each Sunday at 8.30 and 11 a.m., also 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Join us for worship and a gospel message from Cornerstone Church each week. Join us at jhm.org slash watch. Stay tuned. Pastor's bringing a blessing. Hagee Ministries continues to proclaim the unadulterated truth of God's Word around the globe. Thanks to our legacy partners, it's the continued faithfulness of our partners that enables us to provide hope, health, and education to the young mothers and their children that call the Sanctuary of Hope home. As we walk this road together, we are providing humanitarian aid across Israel and helping with relief efforts and community service initiatives at home and abroad. Together, we are transforming the nations of the world for Jesus Christ. We are excited to reach the younger generations as we expand into areas such as Apple TV, Roku, podcasts, social media, and live web streaming. Your action today can become part of your legacy. Become a legacy partner. Call the number on the screen or go to jhm.org slash partner. You've been watching Hagee Ministries. And now, your blessing with Pastor John Hagee. And now may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, giving you his peace. May your spiritual walk with the Lord develop a level of faith that expects Christ to work miracles in your life. Expect that God will send your miracle when you ask. Live with great expectation, knowing your advocate in heaven, Jesus Christ, will present your petition to God the Father. Know that the angels of the Lord will be dispatched to carry out your divine assignment. Walk in the faith that God intended for his children to have, the powerful, life-changing New Testament faith that is filled with mercy, miracles, grace, and absolute healing. In Jesus' name, receive this blessing. Amen.